Welcome back to the AAA MF YouTube channel. Now we've had quite a long break since our Christmas special at Bentwaters Park. The reason being that Tim has only just recovered from his hangover. How are you feeling now, Tim? It was a long one. Yeah, it was a long one. So the weather also hasn't contributed to us filming. As you know, it's been snowing in the UK, but we have sun today and we're back at Hanningfield Reservoir and I've brought along my GT3 RS 4 litre. Now the white one hasn't been out that often because I don't take it out a lot. So I thought I'd show you around the car, talk about the car and why I love this car so much and talk about what I love about naturally aspirated engines. So this, if you don't know, is one of 600 made between 2011 and 2012. 493 brake horsepower and very analog car. So it feels like a racing car to drive and on the road, it feels pretty good. It's pretty bumpy on the roads. When you take it on a track, it just comes alive. So let's look around the car, see what makes this special. So Porsche have gone to great lengths to make this car lighter than the standard 911. So we start off with the most expensive part, which is the carbon fiber bonnet. You can see the lovely mesh there. I don't know how much these are, but they're expensive. And they've obviously put a sticker on instead of a badge to save weight. I'm not really sure how much weight that saves. And then these are carbon as well. Now Porsche made, painted these because it's actually lighter to paint carbon than actually put a protective coating over it. Inside the car, we've got carbon fiber racing seats and we've got a roll cage in the back. Obviously no rear seats, but you can put a little bit of luggage in the back. And this whole rear spoiler is carbon fiber, very, very light to lift up. And then you've got the engine, which you can't obviously see, but it's got this lovely little plaque, RS 4 liter. And obviously you can tell the four liter because it's got the twin exhausts like on the other GT3 RS 3.8. Another thing that makes this really light is plastic windscreen. Not many people probably know that's plastic. And carbon ceramic discs. Now that was an optional extra. A lot of these four liters don't have the carbon ceramic discs and uh, actually looks better at the front because it's a huge caliper there. Yeah, so you can tell it's a, a ceramic disc if it's painted yellow. Obviously the standard steel brakes are painted in red. So what makes the four liter so special and what makes it stand out from other 911s? Well, three or four things. Of course, the engine. The engine in this is not your standard 911 GT3 engine. This is derived from the RSR, so it has a racing engine in it. And you can hear that when you accelerate. It's got so much torque. It's got 50 brake horsepower over the 3.8 liter engine GT3 RS. Loads of mid-range power. The second thing is the steering is really direct. You obviously have hydraulic steering on this. They moved over to electric steering on the 991 GT3 RS and you really feel the directness in this. It's almost like a go-kart. Really responsive, really direct. The manual gearbox is beautiful to interact with. I really like having a manual gearbox, especially if you're going to take it to a track. I've taken my Plank GT3 RS to a racetrack and when the semi-slick tyres are warm, it feels unbelievable. It grips the track like nothing you've ever been in. The noise of the engine sounds fantastic as well. You've got the option of the sport button to make it sound a little bit louder. The downsides on the road are that this has a very flat under tray and it's quite stiff suspension and it's not adjustable so if you hit a bump in the road the car tends to bob up and down and, and uh, can be quite disconcerting if you're going at speed 
Overall though, a very, very special car. Only 600 made, which makes it even more special because you hardly ever see them on the road. the v10 sounds pretty amazing right tim amazing much better than the porsche unfortunately for you unfortunately should we take it for a drive we should let's go for it thank you ed How are you doing? safety first always driving this uh, now for around 15 minutes initial impressions the engine Tim the engine right Amazing. masterpiece I um, I drove a Gallardo spider for a couple of weeks a few years back and I just remember that beautiful V10 howl behind me and I loved it and the engine in this is just fantastic the noise and as you're downshifting, you get the blips and the pops. It's amazing. The uh, the steering's very direct. I wasn't expecting that. It actually is comparable to my Porsche. Very different. You can feel it's electric, but it's still very direct. Obviously, no manual gearbox. I like the manual gearbox. I really do. I love the interaction with the manual, and I don't think you can beat that. However, it's nice to have a dual clutch gearbox. So this car has um, Strada Sport and Corsa modes. In Strada, which we're in now, it's really quiet and it's quite comfortable and refined. You don't really hear the engine. You can't hear it, Tim, at all, right? Not at all. But if we put it down into Corsa, you get the nice dash coming up. And it turns into a bit of an animal. you'd want a Lamborghini to be loud exotic looking I mean it, this color looks phenomenal on the road I was driving up to the location in my Porsche with Tim and the uh, Lambo pulled up next to us and it just looked out of this world doesn't it yeah, like yeah. a UFO yeah it looks phenomenal at the end of the day the 911 is a 911 it's got a big silly wing on the back but it's still a 911 it doesn't look anything like a Lamborghini. Now, we're pulling up next to the owner now, and I don't want to give the car back. Tim? No, I think we should take it. Should we keep driving? Yeah. Okay. Did he give us an evil look? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I would like this car. I'm used to driving a McLaren 650S Coupe every day, which is much more refined. It's got the hydraulic suspension, which is really smooth. And I didn't think I would enjoy driving this, but this is rather addictive. The noise, the look, these seats are not comfortable. My back is killing. Yeah, my back's hurting me. So, 
If you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I have ordered one of these and I've ordered the Spider version, which is coming out this summer in the UK. So the first time I saw that was at Geneva, but I put my name down sometime last year. And um, this is the first time I've actually driven the car, so I'm really pleased that I like it. The reason I got the convertible version was because you get just a lot more visibility once you've got the roof down. And I think you can really hear the engine much better when you've got the roof down in that car. I mean, this is all about the noise, the experience, so why not have the roof down? I mean, I'm unlikely to ever go on a track with it. And if I do, it's probably once a year. Can you imagine this around a racetrack, Tim? Yeah, Just like annihilate, annihilate everything. Obviously, these cars are wasted on the road. They're designed for the track, but they're a lot of fun on the road nevertheless. So that concludes the video. The Lamborghini Huracan Performante. An amazing engine, an amazing gearbox, and best of all, it looks like a spaceship. Thanks for watching. Subscribe because we have some very special videos coming up soon. See me move, see you watching. It's like we left the club. Lose the distance, don't resist this chemistry we're cooking up.